everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jennifer. I do have the new Suku collection, the summer collection, but it's actually been out for quite some time. Um, I don't know why it took so long to get to me, but it did. So I will use it on my face, but I'm not gonna go into like in depth. We've talked about Suku a number of times and the products are as good as they always are. Um, these are just warmer shades, I think, more than anything else, so I'll show them to you. If you want in-depth things, maybe I can do something on Instagram or swatch them or etc. Um, but mostly we're going to focus on the Westman Atelier uh, powder. So this is the Vital Pressed Skincare Powder. And I did pick it up in two shades. Um, I have Creme and Pink Bubble. Pink Bubble is not here yet. So I thought we could talk about the Creme today, see how it works, see what it does. Let's talk about the packaging, all that good stuff. That's what it looks like. There are actually five shades. We can talk about the different shades um, and why I picked up the creme and the um, pink bubble. So we'll talk about that. Um, I also have the Sonia G brushes, the Hinoki, yes, Hinoki set. So we'll talk about that. I do have a new shade of the Hermes lip oil. So I'll show you that. Um, and so we'll just do sort of like a, a fast round um, first impression. Um, we'll take more time on the uh, on the uh, Westman Atelier powder. When I get the other Westman Atelier powder, I will do a more in-depth review. And um, if you follow me over on Instagram, it's like the month of cream bronzers and highlighters and face products. So I am picking up the Westman Atelier, the Charlotte Tilbury, the, I have the Chanel, um, the Makeup by Mario, the Rare Beauty. I think I might pick up M Cosmetics too. And I will do a, like a roundup video of all of those and how they compare and contrast. Um, but that's going to take a while because I, I have to travel again. <laughs> so let's dig in. Let's dig into Suku. So these are available on Selfridges, Harrods, and Liberty London. I think a lot of the collection actually is still available. I picked up the two eye quads, the blushes, and the highlighter. I did not pick up on any of the lip products. And um, you've got one... 15, which is known as, and I'm probably gonna butcher this, but I will do my best. Anika, um, it's this color story here. This one seems to be gone on the Selfridges site, but it may be available at Harrods or Liberty London. Um, and then 116, which is Kukyu, Kukyu. This does seem to be available. Um, on Selfridges and maybe available on the other sites as well. I'll probably use one or two shades from that today um, just to give you like an, a feel for what they look like. Then the blushes, they both, the blushes seem to both be available. Um, these are the uh, melting powder blushes, which I love this formula. It's a phenomenal formula. Um, you've got the 101, which is definitely like this orange, almost pumpkin-y. In the fall, this is gonna be awesome. Not that it's not awesome now, but you know. Um, and then we have this lighter one that almost looks like a tan. Um, and this is 102. And then in addition, we have the highlighter, which is new to the Suku line. And that one is number 101. That, um, that does not seem to be available. Uh, and now again, I didn't check, I didn't check Harrods or, um, uh, my, my brain, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't check Harrods or, uh, Liberty London, so they might be available there. For those of you who asked, they are not available in the U.S., um, so you have to order from one of those retailers. The Hermes, the lip oil, I have it in, uh, beige sapotil. Sapotil, I'll get a pronunciation, but I'll tell you, this is not beige. Um, I actually really like it. It's like a warmer, corally kind of peachy shade. I wouldn't call it beige, um, but um, it's really nice. I can't tell you right now about the smell. Um, my, uh, my sense of smell is coming back, but it's still limited. So I don't wanna tell you what it smells like and be totally off. So I will do something with the swatch of that and I have rose cola as well. I'll probably do it on Instagram. It might take a while, but I'll, I'll give you an update um, what they look like compared to each other and then the scents. But for now, we'll have at least the shade so you can see what it looks like. Uh, all right, so let's start um, actually with the eye look because I'm gonna do a very simple eye look. I'm gonna go in with two of the shades. I'm gonna go in with this deep brown shade 
and this sort of peachy um, pink shade. So I'm not going to actually do a you know a full tutorial with these today. But what I would tell you is that the Suku brand, um, if you're not familiar with it, and this is your first time uh, watching me um, and or the first time watching me talk about Suku, is that the formula in the eyeshadows are really really good. I have never had one that's disappointed. Um, sometimes the color stories are, you know, a little um, unique and I don't automatically see like how they're going to work and then I do them and they work perfectly. So um, I would say trust the process when you get a Suku quad. There's a reason that they've been curated the way they have um, and they always, they always end up working out. But Okay, so we've got the brown shade on. I created a very blown out transition with that brown. It's a very pigmented shade. Uh, I think it's gonna work for a lot of folks. Um, it really does have a lot of opacity if you want it to, um, but it can sheer out. And I think it's, you know, it's the Suku formula, which is, it doesn't really look sometimes like much in the pan. Like you're kind of like, ah, oh, it looks like, you know, a brown. But then you put it on the eye and it's just so much nicer than you thought it was going to be. So I would say definitely um, if you haven't tried Suku, they're worth trying. The shadows and the melting blushes are phenomenally good. Uh, I've never had anything that I've used from them that I didn't absolutely love. Okay, so that is the very, very quick Suku look. Like I said, this one is available um, on Selfridges right now, and this one is number 116. Really quickly, let me swatch this for you on my hand. There's the topper shade, which is a very light opalescent shade. Um, there's this like grayish shade in here that has like a little bit of shimmer to it. There's the brown matte, which I showed you, and then this gorgeous peachy, like bronzy, coppery shade. So those are the four. Um, this is the opalescent shade. This shade has shimmer, like has a satin to it, this grayish shade. And this one has the, the matte, and this one has, you know, more of that satin as well. So I really, I think this is, I'll pull that up. I think this is a really beautiful, um, almost neutral palette. I think the shades are a little bit warmer leaning, but if you look at them on my eye, you can tell that they go a little bit cool. I don't have an eye primer on. So if you're looking for something that I think is relatively neutral, I think these shades are, I think, you know, on me, things tend to go a little bit cool. So if I take the only shade I didn't use, I used the, the brown in the crease, this all over the eye, this little, um, this uh, opalescent in the corner, I can take the, um, the grayish shade and like put a little bit here and you'll see how it like instantly, that's the thing about these shades, they like instantly mix and now you've got a different look. It's, the, sh the shadows are phenomenally good. They blend super easily. You can see that just sort of warmed it up a little bit. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful quint. They all are beautiful. It just depends on your color story and you know, like what you, what you like. I'd say the other one, the 115 is definitely more um, orangey, bronzy. This has a little bit of pink, but you get the idea. This is a, a warmer one than the, the um, 116. But I think they're both a little warm leaning. Okay, let me um, clean up the eye just a little bit. I'm going to use the, sh the shade Eros um, from uh, Chanel. I think that's a good fit for this. It's a little different. Maybe on a little bit of mascara, we'll jump to the blushes, the highlighter, and then we'll try out the Westman Atelier powder. Okay, mascara is on. We're about to put the blushes on, but I want to talk about the brushes we're going to use. These are the Sonia G Hinoki set. I'm looking at my phone to make sure I get this detail right. Uh, it's a limited edition release from Sonia G. Uh, two artisan-made makeup brushes crafted from Japanese Cypress, which is the wood, Hinoki wood. Um, velvety, soft, undyed 
Sekoho goat bristles, adorned with cranes that symbolize happiness, beauty, and longevity. Uh, the This brush is a full, densely packed brush for applying and buffing in product quickly and effortlessly. And this is a smaller angled brush with fluffy, airy bristles for precision application with sheer, buildable payoff. Um, I think they are relatively limited. I don't think there's a ton left. So if you are interested in picking them up, they are available on Beautylish. So let's swatch the blushes. We have the, um, what I'm calling the pumpkin blush. Uh, it's very pretty, like I love it. It's, I, I think it's similar to uh, Autumn Mood in Dior, um, but it's lighter. It has like a, a lighter, more ethereal quality. All of the Suku products do, to be honest. Um, and it's, uh, it's just, it's really beautiful. So that's 10, let me make sure I have the numbers right, 101, I think the other one is 102. Yeah. Okay, so the orangey one is 101, and this one is 102. And when I look at this, I almost get like a highlight slash bronze kind of thing for me because it's so light. I think a lot of folks will use this as a highlighter. Um, for me, because I'm so pale, uh, it definitely could be a blush, but I just, I want to mention that because it is just a really, uh, like light, light tan, coppery kind of shade, whereas the orange is much more pigmented. Um, and then the melting, it's the melting powder highlighter, uh, 101, which is a new product, has this swirled look, which I'm about to destroy. Um, and it has more of a almost like, I don't know, I'll put it over here too. It's like a, um, I don't know what that is, like gold kind of almost uh, peach, I guess, kind of highlight. It's really pretty, but I have to tell you, I think I like, well, we'll see how this looks. Let's, let's put it on the face and see what happens. So let's start with the, the lighter one, the, um, the 102. Uh, because I feel like we should um, we should start with the lighter one. So we'll start with the 102. And I think you can see, yeah. See how it almost looks like um, a subtle bronzer on me? I mean, it's subtle because I'm, you know. But it has like this bronzy, it almost looks like a bronzer on me. Um, a very light bronzer but I, that works for me because I don't really bronze. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really tan, it's not my thing. Um, so on me, I think that's like stunning. I don't have technically, I don't think they have a bronzer. So I don't actually have a bronzer from Suku. Um, this brush is amazing, by the way, just not a shock, but. Um, so I'm gonna kind of use this as bronzer, and because the Sucre products are so, I mean, there is some um, luminescence to this, but because they're so ethereal and light, you absolutely can use this as a bronzer. It's not gonna be too shimmery, you know what I mean? Um, it's just gonna look glowy. I think it kind of reminds me a little of the uh, Chanel Glow Powder, the um, Sunset, I think it's called, that I talked about when I was talking about the bronzers. It has just like a little bit of glow to it. Not a lot, just tiny, tiny bit. Oh, I love the shade. This might be my my, fav my favorite Suku shade in blush, the melting blush. Just because for me, it's subtle and I can use it as a very subtle bronzer or blush. Yeah, I really like that. I think that's stunning. The, the melting blush is are beautiful by Suku. Like, guys, they're just, they're amazing. All right, so let's try the um, the orange. It's definitely gonna be, uh, you know, much more pigmented on me. I'm just gonna kind of tap it in here. It goes very well with that um, 10, it goes very well with the 102. This is the 101, and I'm just kind of, placing it and then we'll buff it in a second. But you can see it's much uh, more pigmented than the 101. Let's kind of blend that a little. Oh, that's really pretty. And see the luminescence to that. 
Which is why, honestly, like when they said they were coming out with um, highlighter, I was very excited. But I was also like, wow, because the blushes already have this luminescence to them that I don't really even feel like I need a, a luminizer most of the time with Suku. But I do think it's, I do think it's going to be really pretty. Then I think that's beautiful. Definitely warm leaning. Um, and like I said, the, the, 10, the 102 is more of that like very light tan, almost like a bronzer on me. It can be a blush, absolutely, but it has that kind of feel like it could work as a bronzer on me. And then the um, 101 is definitely this more, you know, peach, orange kind of shade. All right, so let's go in with the highlighter. I'm gonna go in with the, um, the second brush in the Hinoki set, because this is gonna be much more targeted. Um, and we're just gonna start like down the nose and see how this looks is, yeah, it's, it's, it's pigmented. You can see, <laughs> you can see. Now on me, it's interesting. It has kind of like an orange, like I like it, but I, I have to tell you, I think I like the blushes more. It has sort of an orange cast to it. I mean, it's peach, but it's a little orange. You can see it here, like on my on my hand. Let me build it up a little bit. Like it has this kind of almost like orange slash peach cast to its highlighter. And I I don't really like warm highlighters, to be honest with you. They tend to just look kind of orange against my face. In fact, I'm gonna take a little bit off of what I have on my on my nose because I think it's I think it's too orange okay fixed it um yeah I'm not I'm I'm surprised I don't really like the highlighter as much I mean it's okay it's pretty um but it's a little it goes a little orange on me and honestly I like the blushes more I'm going back with the um the 102 I like that shade more I feel like that's like a natural shade for me and looks beautiful. I think the highlighter um, is like a little too orange on me. It's pretty, it's a beautiful highlighter. I just, I wish it was more pink or maybe even like white. Like it's just a little too orange for my skin tone. It's interesting. I thought that would be the thing I'd be most excited about. And it's not bad guys, it's not bad, it's just, it's not my favorite. Okay. Okay. So we've got all the suku on. Let's use the Hermes lip oil and then we'll talk about the Westman Atelier and spend some time on that one. This is the beige Sapotil. It's a soft beige with a bright orange note reminiscent of Sapodilla, a tropical fruit with creamy caramel flavored flesh. That's interesting. Um, anyway, like I said, I, I can tell you the notes. I'm not exactly sure if it smells like that or not. But it says comforting notes of sandalwood and arnica uh, combined with a soft and caramelized note of sapodilla. I can sort of smell it, so let's put it on. I'll show it to you on my on my hand. Um, like I said, it does. It even though it says beige, it's got this like coral note to it. I think it's really pretty. I think it'll be great for spring and summer. And let's put it on the lips. There you go. I don't think there's um, a ton of um, pigment in the Hermes. Like, there's enough pigment. This definitely looks different than the Rose Cola on the lips, but it's not so much so that, like, if you got one, um, there's the beige. Hold on, I'm just looking at the uh, the shades. So there's the Poupre uh, Carmarine. There's the Rose Cola. There's the Rouge Amarel. There's the Rose Piatta. There's a Corel uh, Bagarde, and then there's the beige Sapotil. They're, I think they're all sheer enough so that if you got, you know, one of the different ones, it would be okay. Um, the Rose Cola has sandalwood arnica um, with the cola. And then this one, the beige has sandalwood arnica with the Sapodilla. So I think that's the difference between the two. They both have the arnica and the um, sandalwood though. Smell is comforting, at least of what I can smell of it. it. Smells comforting. Okay, so let's talk about the Westman Atelier. And if that's all you were interested in coming here for today, I will make sure there were timestamps so you can talk about this. Um, 
First of all, it comes in the Pebble Compact, so it's very heavy, very weighty. Um, it's gold. It has that, you know, um, some of the other ones are like silver or pewter. This is definitely a gold compact. Opens up like this. This is the creme shade. It has a mirror inside. Um, it's named the Vital Press Skin Care Powder. It has 0.17 ounces, um, and it has zinc, mica, silica, uh, seed oil. There's a bunch of things in here. I don't know what they are. <laughs> um, and people have asked about scent. I don't smell anything. Again, my sense of smell is not as good as it, it usually is, but I do have a sense of smell now. So I, if I could smell, I can smell the, the Hermes. I smell nothing in this. Like literally, I smell nothing. Um, it has a 12 month shelf life. And these are um, these are our clean beauty. As I said, I picked up the creme and the pink bubble. Um, the pink bubble is not here yet. So let's go on the site really quickly. It says it works like makeup, acts like skincare. So supercharged skincare actives, micro milled into setting powder form, sweep away shine, set makeup, and protect skin's natural radiant dimension says antioxidant rich potency packed micro milled active skincare ingredients that are now into a powder that does more than set. So it's ultra sheer feathery light instantly smooths pores, evens tones, swoops away shine, um, made with vitamin C probiotic shields from free radicals, protects from blue light uh, and over time pressed in activities help to control sebum and refine the skin texture. So again, it's, it's clean, it's talc free, it's silicone free. It comes in five shades. There's translucent, which is invisible, which will work on most folks. I might pick up the translucent if I really like the um, cream and the creme and the uh, pink bubble. So we'll see. Uh, the pink bubble is brightening and it's for light to medium skin. So that's what I wanted, sort of a brightening, maybe under the eye kind of thing around here. Um, that one is on its way to me. Who knows when I'll actually get it. Then the creme is a sheer light to medium complexion, which is what I picked up. There is the dune, which is a sheer tan complexion. And then there's cafe, which is a sheer deep complexion. It is possible that the uh, cafe or even the dune could work as like a bronzing powder on me. I don't know. Um, I I was going to actually pick up like a whole bunch and just like maybe all of them and try different ones to see if they would work as bronzers. But these are very expensive. They're $75 a piece. So I figured, you know what? <laughs> let's, let's try two and see what we think. Um, so I'm going to use a, um, I'm going to use a really good brush. I am going to use a uh, F09 Chikahoto brush. This is a very large, fluffy brush. Um, and we're going to try to see how this works in different ways. First, I'm going to kind of like press with this and then I'm going to sweep on the other side. Let's see what this does. And let me bring you in a little closer so we can really see the texture of my skin. Okay. So let's use this, like just kind of press This brush isn't really made for pressing, but you get the idea. It definitely smooths your texture. If you look at this side versus this side, it, it did smooth, that's really interesting. But you don't see anything on the skin. It's not like it left any like marks or anything. All right, let's try like brushing. It feels like nothing, guys. It doesn't even feel like there's anything going on my skin. But I can see it on my brush, so wow. That looks really nice. Let's try, I have an idea. Let's try putting it under the eye. I'm gonna use a Angie Hot and Flashy concealer brush. I'm gonna take powder on the edge of that brush and then I'm gonna tap. Oh. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> that actually works. I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound, but like I'm always surprised when a product actually... On me, I have very dry skin, if you haven't watched me before. And I don't put powder under my eyes because it just accentuates lines because I'm 50, about to be 50 this next week. That looks phenomenally good. Wow. Guys. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sold. I might have been the best $75 I've spent in quite some time. Look at that. I mean, look, I don't suddenly look 20. I mean, I, you know, but it didn't, it didn't cake. It just sort of smoothed everything out, made me look, made this area look smoother. It feels like nothing. It feels like there's nothing. I'm sorry, I was just, I'm... <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. I'm in direct sunlight too, guys. I mean, that looks phenomenally good. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my 10X mirror. It looks phenomenally good. Well, now I can't wait to get the pink bubble and maybe I will pick up the other shades. I'll wait. I'll wait until I see, I'll wait until I see which one to get because that looks phenomenally good. Um, yeah, okay. Wow. I think I've actually finally found a powder that I'm impressed by. To be honest with you, most powders I'm always like, yeah, it's good. There's a couple of loose powders that I do like, but pressed powders, I'm always like, eh. The only one I've ever really been wowed by is the By Terry, and that one I've had for years. That's what that looks like. So it does have like a warmish color to it when you when you swatch it, when you put it on your finger. But when you put it on your skin, you're not gonna be able to see this because it disappears. I mean, you're not, <laughs> you're not gonna be able to see it. Um, but for my skin tone, it's perfect. This is a beautiful powder. It feels beautiful. It's silky. It has like a, almost like a moist, not moisturizing, but it has this feel to it. Like it's, like it has skincare in it. Like it's actually got that in there. I mean, I, I know it says it does, but it actually feels like it does. And it looks really beautiful on the skin. Like it doesn't, it doesn't accentuate lines. It doesn't, it doesn't cake. It doesn't, I mean, we'll have to see how it wears, but, but wow. Okay. Um, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Um, so like I said, I have the creme and that's the one I've done today. I'll have the pink bubble. I'll do her, I'll do both of them so we can do like a side by side once I get it. Um, Dune is the shade that I think I would probably use as like a bronzer, but you know I might want Cafe as well because I could do like a bronzer contour thing. That powder is impressive. I'm gonna have to use it for a while and see, you know, what it does over the day. But I'm just rereading this. I wonder what it looks like just on pure, like on my naked skin without foundation. I bet you it would, I bet you it would look really pretty just like to set, you know, like when on the days that I don't wear makeup, but I just want my skin to look better. I am very impressed. Uh, Gucci Westman says, I wanted to create a powder that didn't more than just set makeup. We've carefully selected skincare actives and pressed them into the most feathery light formula. It is, it's, it feels like nothing. 
takes down shine while keeping skin's radiance and still looking natural, and it does. And the skin benefits just get better as you wear it over the time. The weightless feel and beautiful real skin finish make it easy to layer at any step. I use this to set foundation or to refresh makeup throughout the day. I use translucent as an invisible skin refining veil and the sheer tinted shades to even out tone. Pink bubbles are great for a subtle boost of brightness. Well, on, on first impressions, guys, I'd say it's absolutely a fantastic product. Whether it's worth $75 to you is a different question, but um, the, the packaging is definitely weighty, uh, and you could hurt someone with this. Um, and it's a very streamlined, very, you know, classic, I think, um, subtle elegance is what comes to mind when I see these. Um, and I, I love the Western Atelier aesthetic in general, so I'm very impressed and I love this kind of design. Just keeps it simple, but it's it's very well done. Um, so like I said, I'll get the pink bubble, I'll do a side by side. I will refrain from picking up other shades for now because I want to use these and see, well, and hopefully the pink bubble will arrive at some point. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just stunned at how good that looks. Powder just doesn't look good on me. Powder always looks powdery on me. And then when it doesn't look powdery on me, it kind of looks like nothing. So I'm always like, well, it's fine, but it doesn't, you know, it just, I'm always like, well, I paid $70 to look a little better, you know, okay. This, in my opinion, and again, I'm looking in a 10X mirror, so I might be seeing it at a level that you can't see it, but it looks so much smoother, which, you know, for someone who's about to turn 50, that's, uh, I'm willing to pay $75 for that. But, I mean, that's just me, but I'm just saying. Okay. All right, so I'll have updates. Um, uh, I'll get more details as I can. When I have the pink bubble, I'll post about that too. So thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. Hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye.